Hello! Welcome to Friday. We're gonna do a weekend vlog here. I have so many things to do. It's kind of gonna be like a productivity vlog, I guess, or projects that I do. Some projects I want to do and some projects I don't really want to do. So I guess join me. First thing we're gonna work on is a temperature blanket right here. So I just started crocheting like in August and it's October. I've done a few things here and there. I'm definitely still a beginner. I feel like every beginner crocheter has to make a temperature blanket and I know that temperature blankets are controversial in the crochet community. <laughs> um, whatever, I've never made one so we're gonna make one. I actually started it in September so it'll end the end of August next year. I will put up right here the colors and what temperatures they correspond to. So, so far, this is what I have. This is September 1st and this white line is the monthly divider. So I did that. So this is between uh, September and October and I think I've done well so far. I mean, gosh, I've got all of September done. That's great. Something about temperature blankets excite me <laughs> or like I'm, I'm excited, okay? And I think it's because I get to change the colors up every so often. I can be like, oh, I'm gonna do four rows of the yellow and then I get to go to green and green is so exciting. Like, love that. So to me, it's kept me very interested in it. And although I am a little bit behind, it's, it's nice to get through. So I think I'm gonna do a few rows of that today. This is how I am tracking it. My colors are up here. I write down the temperatures right here and then I put a little check mark. And so far that's how many I've done. Those are just rows. Then the monthly divider and I am on October 7th and I'm about to do four rows of yellow for the 70s. And then we're gonna go down to 60, which is this like cream color or what they call it, like oatmeal. And then 50s, which is the green and I love it. It's so beautiful. It's called forest. It's so so, so pretty. I'm going off of the highs for the day and you can do it any way you want to do it. Some people go off the averages for the day, some people go off the lows or the highs and the lows or if it rained or snowed. There's so many ways to make like a temperature blanket. You can even do it like retroactively like a blanket you know from years ago or like a year that was really memorable to you. There's like so many ways to do it and you don't have to do stripes like this. You could do squares or uh, triangles or go from corner to corner. There's like so many ways to do this. This is just what I'm doing. So I chose to do 240 stitches across. And then of course it's going to be like 365 rows or plus because of the monthly dividers. I'm pretty sure it's going to be able to fit a queen size bed, which I think maybe it's better to make the biggest blanket ever in the world because all the other blankets I make in the future will be a piece of cake because they'll be smaller. So uh, I will show you how big it is right now um, across because it is pretty big. Each row takes me approximately 18 minutes to complete. Usually I cannot do a row uh, for 18 minutes straight. I get very distracted, but you know, we get there eventually. It's actually a really nice mindless activity because I'm doing single crochets across. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just doing single crochets, stripes, that's it. Let me show you how like long it is. So this is my bed. It is a queen size. This is where it starts right here, okay? And then it goes all the way up down here. So yeah, pretty giant. So this is my second office. First place, that's where, even though it's my, my bedroom, that's my also my office crafty area. But uh, this is my second one. So let's get started on this. We are gonna be doing, I did one color of this yellow and I think I have to do four more, no, three more. That could take an hour, but I'm gonna like really focus on this and hopefully I can get three of them done in less than an hour. I don't think I mentioned the type of yarn I'm using. I'm using uh, Lion Brand Wool Ease, the worsted weight, one, this is, I believe, 20% wool. Yes, 20% wool, 80% acrylic. I wanted it to be, you know, easy to throw in the washer. So yes, acrylic, easy to wash, easy to take care of. Well, let's get to it. I started knitting, I first learned in 2010, and I stuck with that for a while. I love knitted goods and really anything made with yarn. I'm a big fan. And I have knitted on and off since then. I wouldn't say I'm an expert and I wouldn't say I'm a beginner, but you know, I still haven't done things with cables yet. You know, I've made a lot of scarves and hats and I made one vest, sweater vest, I would say. It is like the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. I still have it. I've never worn it. This is how it turned out. I hate the colors. It is 100% acrylic. 
I did that on purpose because it was my first garment and I wanted to use cheap yarn because I didn't know how it was going to turn out. This is what it looks like. It's very, very wide. I believe there is a color change like right in the middle, right here, which is really annoying. I hate that. This is the back. Okay, this is what it looks like on. You know, I guess it's, I don't know. Well, the neckline's weird. The neckline's very weird. Like, I guess the fit's okay. It's kind of like boxy and like loose, kind of comfy, but um, I don't know. This is what the back looks like. Yeah, I don't know. I think that I enjoyed making this, but next time I'm definitely going to use a better fiber. I think maybe it would just turn out a little bit better. Wow. Look at that. I also lived in Texas, Houston to be exact, and it was hot as hell there and very just not motivating to knit things as well as there's like, at least I didn't find any like really cool like little yarn shops. There was only like a couple. I now live in Colorado and there are little yarn shops everywhere. I can find yarn pretty much anywhere. I thrift yarn a lot. I can definitely take you on a tour of my thrifted yarn stash. Anyway, back to knitting, my knitting history. I uh, stopped knitting like two years ago. I was in Houston. Now I am in Colorado. It is beautiful here. It gets cold here. The seasonal changes. It's very motivating to knit. For some reason in August, I got this bug to crochet. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. I had a little bit of yarn and I have some crochet hooks already from knitting. So I just used those and I learned how to do it. Here's actually a clip of me literally learning how to crochet because I filmed it in August. <laughs> Since then, I've been so sucked in to crochet. That's all I want to do. I want to crochet everything. So I, of course, started with the typical, you know, washcloth. I made a basket uh, that looks really funny, which I will show you right here. This is the basket I made. <laughs> it's being held up by a hook. It's currently holding all of my socks that I need to mend. Yes, I have a lot of socks that I love and I don't want to get rid of. So when I'm bored this winter, I will mend them. And for now, they're sitting in this basket. I don't know why, but the middle sticks out. It looks very odd. It's, it's just, it's strange. I don't know what's going on with this raffia. Being that this was the second or third project I've ever made, the ugliness is to be expected. And now I think I could definitely make a better looking basket. And I made a little project bag a couple weeks ago. I was going on a plane and I didn't really have a bag. I wanted to make, make one specifically to carry my like crochet crap in. So I did that and it worked perfectly. It was beautiful. I put a pocket in there. Uh, it's Perfect. Now I'm, you know, working on this blanket. I'm working on this cardigan over here. That's it. Oh, I am working on a little thing for my mom. And oh, I have another cardigan also that I'm, I started, which is in the office. So I think I have four things right now. There is a bag that I need to finish. I made this little purse type bag or like what I want to call a uh, evening bag. I just have to finish like the little strap thingy and then it'll be done. I love soft and cozy things. So this craft just kind of works out. Even this amount of a uh, blanket that I've made, I'm so excited for. It's already keeping me somewhat warm. Very excited to see just how massive this gets. I really truly, can't wait. So I didn't get very far. I did one row. I'm not really sure when I started. It was probably an hour ago or more, but I got really distracted. Here we are. I feel like I could do more, but I'm starting to get like so hot. It's 81 degrees out for some reason. And it's just kind of hot to have a giant blanket on your lap for like a long time. So we are going to move on. There are two things that I have to do before we go to the garden. And that is to shower and clean my kitchen. And then we have to go to the garden to dump the compost, harvest kale. And I think, think that's it. So yeah, let's go uh, clean the kitchen.
All right, so we're at the garden. I successfully cleaned the kitchen and I showered. I'm in the car now at the garden. Oh, I'm sweating my ass off. It's still 80 something degrees. I work in a community garden because I don't have a garden of my own. So I have to rent a plot from this community garden. And I rent two plots. It's pretty cheap yearly since the winter is approaching us very fast. A lot of people are cleaning their gardens out and whatnot. We did have a freeze or a frost and maybe a freeze or something like last week. Any hot weather vegetable is dead. So we'll go check that out. That's good stuff right there. Ew, I got some on me. These people definitely have the right mind with their little greenhouse thing going on. This person has the biggest zucchini I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god. It's the only thing in here. I don't I don't know why. That's cool. I have my crocs on. These are my gardening shoes. These are my zucchini plants. They are dead. I think I'm gonna take care of some of these leaves and I'm gonna rip out this zucchini plant tomorrow. Because we're gonna come back tomorrow and do some work. I'm gonna cut this thing off and this thing. Get rid of this. Oh my god. I can't. Oh, this is disgusting. Oh my god. Ew. Ew. This was once a zucchini. Oh my god. That is disgusting. Oh! Um. Oh my god, look at those perfect strawberries that my neighbor has. Oh, they actually let me um, take some and I made jam out of it and it was so freaking good. Actually, I made strawberry rhubarb and it was delicious. So let's do a garden tour. These are my two beds. Okay, so we had zucchini here, obviously. I don't remember how many pounds we grew, but I will put up on the screen how many pounds of zucchini these two plants gave me in this tiny, tiny pot. This right here is borage. I can't remember really when I planted it, but uh, I grew it from seed, and I don't know what kind of damage that is. I hope it survives. Okay, these are onions. They're not really doing too well. Look, that thing is tiny. I planted that so long ago. Over here, we have cilantro. Some of it's kind of dried up. Ooh, oh, that's brown. Okay. I'll just keep growing it until uh, it dies, I guess. Okay, these are peas, like sugar snap peas. I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna get sugar snaps by the time we get a really, really hard freeze, but hopefully, hopefully I'll get something. What is that? Ooh. <laughs> oh my God, this was dill at one point. It is now dead dill. I'll take care of that tomorrow. These are onions and I also planted, ew, why is that slimy? I also planted garlic over here. They have not popped up yet. These are beets. I don't know, maybe they're sensitive to the cold temps, I'm assuming. I'll probably harvest these tomorrow. What is this, a daikon? I believe this is a daikon. Daikon. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Not a daikon. Could be tatsui, or no, no, sorry. That's a beet. Pretty sure that that's a beet. Okay, good. Okay, so these were eggplants. I planted them too early in the season and they got stunted and I only got one tiny eggplant. That's unripe from them and then they died. That's great. Okay, this way here was supposed to be a bell pepper, a red striped bell pepper, and I got a really tiny one. It never ripened and then it rotted. This was also supposed to be a bell pepper. This was supposed to be purple and it was not a bell pepper. It was something, whatever that thing is. Um, not a bell pepper and not purple. I don't know what this is. A tatsoi? Maybe a tatsoi. I don't know. This is savory. Summer savory. I already harvested it last week, so it's kind of the one. Okay. Oh my god. Whatever that noise is, it needs to stop. We have some time here. It's doing well. We also have parsley right here. I planted these recently, so they're not really huge and developed, but they're they're there. This little thing right here is a hollyhock. It should be massive. Hollyhocks are massive. I don't think it's gonna get that big because the freeze will kill it. There's also a random hollyhock here. We also have carrots, which I'm sure will be like baby carrots because I don't think they'll have time to become giant ones. Like these ones, which I planted at the beginning of the season. Oh my God, I need to uh, pick these tomorrow, I think. These are my kale trees. 
over here we have onions that are doing well, would say. I mean, kind of have a bulb right there. That's a bulb. That is oregano. This is one strawberry plant right here. Uh, I don't know what this is. Maybe a daikon? Maybe just a normal radish? I don't know. This right here was mint that randomly grew. It was a volunteer mint and I'll take it. I harvested it last week. This is catnip. Um, I don't have a cat, but catnip is amazing for insomnia, I believe. So I'm growing it and harvesting it and drying it. Those little guys, these are garlic. I kind of planted it at all different times. So it's kind of just popping up randomly. This is another onion. I think these are violas, but um, I don't really know. That might be a weed, but I, 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 I don't know. I'm not really sure until if it blooms or not. These are Brussels sprouts. Oh, they look amazing. Well, it's leaning quite a bit. They're still growing. Love it. Here's another one. Beast of a plant. These are chives. I think I knew might chop all of these tomorrow and dry them. These are garlic chives right next to them. These are daikons. Oh my god, look at that, with the sun coming through. Wow, that is sticking out really like a lot. I don't know why, maybe it needs more dirt. Maybe the dirt's too compact. Okay, I planted these, but I forgot what they were. They're really pretty. I think it's a flower, but I'm not sure which flower. They love the leaf color, they're beautiful. This is more parsley. There, there, garlic here, and more beets right there, which I'll pick tomorrow. This whole square used to be calendula. It is, it's all dead now. They all died. This is the only one left and I'll probably rip it out tomorrow. Okay, so that was like a tiny little garden trip, but I mostly needed to drop off my compost and I'm glad we got like a little bit of a tour there. Tomorrow we need to go back and get rid of the zucchini plant, pull the carrots, pull the beets, get rid of that calendula, chop the chives, like all of that because I believe the end of next week, the low or something's gonna be like 29 degrees and that's really cold and everything is going to you know, get destroyed. So might as well just get ahead of it. I'm gonna put down some compost and some straw. Hopefully there's some straw left. They provide it for us, which is really nice. Oh yeah, a low of 28 and it's gonna be like a high of 50 for the day. So that's, uh, yeah, I kinda wanna get ahead of that. I was gonna pick some kale, but I just didn't feel like it. We have so much kale at home and that's kinda what we're gonna go work on now and finding food for me. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh Hi, uh, okay, so I'm gonna eat this cucumber and this hummus. This cucumber came from a really nice gentleman in the garden who gave me two of these cucumbers and I already ate, we already ate one, my girlfriend and I. This is the, the second one and it's so freaking, so good. My dogs love cucumbers, so they're like jumping up and down for this cucumber, but I don't think I'm gonna give them any. So I only grew pickling cucumbers this year. I did not grow like slicing cucumbers because I wanted gherkins. So that, that was the plan and that is what I got and made. I made like four jars or something, so that was good. Okay, I lied. We're gonna give them just these, the end of the cucumber. There you go. Those are my dogs. Crunchy, so crunchy. Okay, so I mean, my head keeps getting cut off. Um, it's like you either see me or you see the food, uh, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm chopping this, this cucumber. Ugh, all right. So good. This is everything, everything bagel hummus. It's from Boar's Head. It's so freaking good. I can't get enough of it. Oh my God, it's so good. Seriously? Beautiful glow off the mountains. The sun just set and that's what that looks like. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's so peaceful during this time. Oh. Finally getting around to making dinner. What am I doing? I'm eating sauteed cabbage and onions and roasted potatoes. They're leftovers and they need to be eaten. So I'm gonna mix them together and um, I'm making meatless chicken tenders that I got randomly at Target. So those are, that's my meal. That's what I'm eating. Does that sound good? It's very strange, not a normal meal. I just wanted to get, get rid of that stuff in the fridge to make room for more stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, this is my food. It's so, so bizarre, so strange. I cut up the little chicken tenders. There's some ketchup, there's onions and cabbage, and there's like potatoes down here. Very strange. Look at that little bug in a cave. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm chilling. I'm not moving from the spot. I am working on a thing on my iPad for like an intro to this channel. I'm always going back and forth with 
like should I have an intro thingy or should I not or whatever. I want one that like encompasses me and like you know is is me. So I'm making it on Procreate just a little animation and it's coming along nicely. I think I'm gonna finish off this thing on my iPad and move on to my computer editing. After I edit it's probably gonna be bedtime so I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Morning. It is Saturday and it's 10:33. I have my tea. Mm. It's perfect. I took the dogs out already. It's so beautiful out. The leaves are changing. It's so crunchy and like beautiful. I have actually have a crab apple tree right outside my window. Oh my god, that squeaking. Can we not? Can we not do that today? Thank you. Anyway, there's a crab apple tree. It's turning like yellow, orange, red. It's so beautiful. So I think this morning the plan is get some editing done and then we will go and get dirty outside. Let's get to it. Okay, am I in focus? Hi, we're at the garden. No one is here, which is great. I like being in peace when gardening and not having a million people around. We're gonna get this done real fast. It's already 75 degrees out, so I'm gonna be sweating my ass off, but that's okay. I got my bucket. Let's go harvest some stuff and get rid of some dead plants. You see that? So freaking beautiful. Hear that magpie? Oh, he's just been squawking for like 10 minutes. Thank you for your service, zucchini plant. This is the eggplant that gave me nothing. to be a purple bell pepper. That is not what it is. Okay. This is easy. All right, let's harvest this carrot. Oh. Okay. It's an orange carrot. That's great. I grew rainbow ones, so it's kind of a surprise every time. Hey. Wow. Oh. The orange one. Oh, a little purple one. I don't know if that's usable. Oh, babyest orange one. Kind of wrinkly. Oh, white one. Oh, this one's pretty. Red one. Oh, some stumpy carrots. This is a tiny baby golden beet. Nice. Oh. Oh my god, it's white. Wow. Another golden. Oh wow. Another golden. Golden is my favorite. Golden beads and the white ones. I freaking love them. Right, this is for sure gonna be like a red beet. Mm -hmm. Wow. Solid greens for such tiny beets. Just to put all of its energy into making the greens, which I'm appreciative of that. Okay, I'm gonna chop all of these chives. What a mess. That's 
the pile that I have ended up with. That is the pile of chives that I do not want. So I laid down some compost and more straw. Here's the bucket of harvest. Ooh, amazing. Also, there's a Chinook flying over me right now, so it's kind of loud. Always helicopters here. Okay. Oh my God. Not ideal to be in a community garden, but you know, you do what you can. It is my first year gardening in Colorado. It is very windy here. It's very dry. I am at high elevation, so it's just different here. And not only that, but we get hailstorms probably like every week. Every single thunderstorm came with a wave of hail. And so I had a lot of hail damage. I think I have some footage and if I do, like I'll show it. I hope to have my own garden soon-ish and it's gonna be the biggest baddest thing you've ever seen and I'm so so damn excited I just I can't wait that is kind of uh, the journey that we are on here and uh, yeah let's go home and wash this stuff also I'm starving we need to make a salad we're gonna make it the biggest salad and we're gonna slam it real fast so come along hello Welcome to my kitchen. I'm gonna make a vegan chicken Caesar salad. The one amazing thing about this recipe is the dressing and it is from ambitiouskitchen.com. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. I'm not trying to share the recipe. Go support this person who made this amazing freaking vegan Caesar dressing. It just makes the salad. Using that, it has tahini in it, which I freaking love. I'm gonna use this old lemon romaine and then this is the best chicken ever like we love it we air fry it we throw it on everything it is from morningstar so if you don't eat meat you have to try this it is decently priced for a mock meat and uh, it's good i think this avocado has gone too far unfortunately but i'm still gonna cut it and see uh, that i might have to compost it so let's do it the Chinook is flying over my home again. I just can't. I can't with the thing. I want to mention one last thing. I recently got this salad spinner. Hi. At Target. And this was my old one, which is from Ikea. It's freaking tiny. The size difference. Hello? Oh my god. It fits in there. This one was definitely an upgrade. I'm so excited to use it. It's going to be my first time using it. That's fun. And yes, that's what you get excited about as an adult. So I may have made that a little bit too thin, but uh, it smells so freaking good. Oh my God. I'm not sure if this is too full for the salad spinner, but we're gonna try it anyway. Are we ready for this? Put that on, there's a little lock, whoa. <laughs> and it's a pump one. My other one was like a spin one and this one's gonna be just much easier to use. Oh. oh my god. Wow. I love it. And then over here's a button so you can stop it. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my god, I love it. Is that too aggressive? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, okay. It smells so good. This avocado that I really thought was way overripe because it's like red and it's really soft. It's like the most perfect thing I have ever seen. I mixed arugula in with the romaine. I put a little bit of chives. I got this salt at Trader Joe's. It's wine infused sea salt. It has rosemary. No, it has rosé, pink peppercorns, and rosemary, and I'm going to sprinkle it on top of the avocado. I don't know how good that's gonna be, but I don't know. We'll try it out. Oh, that might be a lot, but I, I, th I think it'll be okay. Chicken. Ooh, hot. I only need really a little bit. I'm gonna have this last me like the whole salad excursion. There we go. Oh my gosh. Swear. It shocks me every single time I make a salad. It's so good. He loves to lay in the sun. Are you sunning? Everything is washed and ready to go. 
I like to weigh everything that I harvest. This is how I do it. I turn on my scale, I weigh everything in grams, tear it out, and then plop things in there like this. Then I use my phone and I take a picture of what's on the scale, which this is 477 grams. I believe that's almost a pound of beets. Look at this carrot. Like, wow. But like, what's going on here? That's a little strange. Also, these are not orange. These are yellow. So I got two yellow carrots and one orange one and a really pretty red one. Okay, so I'm gonna dehydrate the herbs that I picked. This is parsley, I'm gonna dehydrate it so I can have my own dried parsley. Uh, even though I didn't get a lot of this, this is called savory. It's used in a lot of dishes overseas, I believe. I only know like one dish that it's used in and that's a German dish. This is summer savory, which is Bohnenkraut in German. And that literally means bean herb and they use it in bean dishes. Although I think they might use it in other dishes, but I've only had it in like a green bean dish and I decided to grow it. And this is all I got. That's exciting. This is cilantro. Dried cilantro is actually pretty good, especially if it's like very fresh. It wilts so fast if I put it in the fridge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dehydrate it all. And then we have a ton of chives. I think I'm gonna have to cut some of these so they fit on the trays. I'm gonna try to spread them as evenly as possible so they can all dehydrate evenly. This is my dehydrator. This is an X caliber. I've had it since I was 22, which was uh, a long time ago. It's lasted to me that long. It still works beautifully. I love this thing so, so much. And I thank my younger self for purchasing this for a lot of money back then. So after I weigh everything and put it all away, I go into a Google Sheet and I enter in my numbers. I'm gonna share my screen with you so you can kind of see what's going on. I made this Google Sheet at the beginning of the season. Pretty much how it's set up is the date, the weights, the total. I convert it into pounds because I'm American. And I have started putting the prices for them, although it's not for all of them. I do have just the formula written down and I hope to one day just put in like the prices of what I would find in the store to see how much money I saved this year. So hopefully I could do that soon. Obviously, holy basil is not sold in grocery stores, or at least not the ones around me. I'm not really sure how to price that one. Okay, so we found it to the beach greens. So I'm gonna insert one row above. I'm gonna do October, uh, what is it? 21st. And I'm gonna type in 225.2. Usually it'll update this bottom number automatically. Sometimes it doesn't. So, so far we've grown 2.23 pounds of beet greens, which is so cool. 477, enter 4.24 pounds of rainbow beets. And then down here we have the season total. Okay, so that's a lot of grams, but that equals out to 72 pounds of food. I hope to have the prices in there soon so then I can kind of see like how much I grew. Money-wise, that'd be kind of cool to include milestones. It looks like we hit 70, I guess, today. I honestly, I didn't even think I would ever get 70 pounds of food. Like, I thought maybe, maybe 20. And that's after I was starting to like calculate everything. I was like, okay, 20, 15, 20, whatever. And then it just really ramped up end of August for sure. It was just like almost you know, every other day we were going up on another five pounds. It was pretty incredible. That makes me so excited for next year. I really cannot wait to get started again in the garden and just grow so much. I already have plans drawn out in my gardening journal. I'm already there. I'm so excited. That is it. So uh, I'll catch back up with you tomorrow. We'll check out the herbs in the dehydrator and see how they're going. And I'll show you where I store them and all that good stuff. So my chives are done. I'm gonna shove them into this mason jar. These are chives from June or July, I think, that they're still fresh. So I'm just gonna add them to this jar. I like to do like, I don't know, two inch pieces or so and just break them up and throw them in there. And then when this jar is full, I'm gonna turn it into chive powder, which is so delicious. I could definitely use a refill. So this tray filled it up pretty much. I think I'm gonna try to grind up some powder and see how far I get with that. 
There we go. Filled up about halfway, maybe it's like to the to the max line. This is my little herb grinder. It also comes with one of these that has blades in it so you can chop things up. And this one is more of like a grinder. And then I just pulse it until I see powder. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so it still has like a tiny bit of chunks, I guess, in there. So I am going to blend it just a tiny bit more. I think this is a little bit better. It doesn't really come out fine, but that's okay because I usually use it for cooking. I have the chive powder, just a little bit of it. And this is my old chive powder, which again, this was made this year. I don't mind mixing them. There we go. It's kind of dusty, so be aware. It will poof with chive dust. So if you're sensitive to that, be aware. And I just repeat that until I have enough. little hack for getting the powder out and off the bottom of this is to use a paintbrush. I only use this in the kitchen. It stays in the kitchen. I don't use it for anything else. There we have it. All of my chives conveniently in two jars. Love that. So in order to get rid of the kale in my fridge, I need to make room in my freezer for the kales, which means I need to get all of this zucchini out of the freezer. <laughs> I vacuum sealed and froze all of this not too long ago, like a month ago, and I really would like to get rid of it now. This book, this is the new ball book of canning and preserving. It's pretty good. I have a lot of like bunny eared pages in here. I'm using their Summer Bounty Zucchini Relish recipe. And the first thing I need to do is grate the zucchini, but all my zucchini is frozen. So um, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about that. The zucchini is defrosting in the sink. I have to grate an onion. Oh, okay, I'm gonna use this. this. This is why this is here. Definitely for grating onions. So this book doesn't tell me anything in weights. It only gives me liquid measurements, like milliliters for an onion and a zucchini, which makes no sense. Or it gives me cups. So I'm not really sure how much I need to blend. So I'm just gonna blend everything and then I'm gonna measure it all out afterwards. My neighbors love me. <laughs> I think that's good. It's kind of a big old, big old thing of um, onion mush. Oh my God, it's burning my eyes so bad. That needs a lid for sure. Oh my God. Oh. That is zucchini juice. Simply zucchini juice, that's it. I'm very shocked at the color. It is so incredibly green. I love it. I'm putting salt on the zucchini mixture here and adding cold water on top of it. And then I have to let it sit for two hours. I believe that will remove the moisture from the vegetables and also keep them crunchy. It's 5 p.m. right now. I guess I'll see you back at seven. Sounds like it's gonna be at late at night. Okay, I'm shooting through my screen right now, but whoa, looks so freaking beautiful out there right now. Look at this chicken Caesar wrap. Oh my God. Oh, I put everything bagel hummus as a spread in it and it's seriously one of the best things I've ever had in my life. So freaking good. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's ready. I think I will taste test it first and see if it's well seasoned. Oh, mm-hmm. very good. It's sweet. 
it tastes a lot like celery seed and peppers really good stuff i could definitely see this being put on a lot of different things but i most want to put it on a hot dog mm -hmm. we are water bath canning today this is my water bath canner I'm using half pints. These are from Walmart, which I've never used before. Also, if you didn't know, at high elevation, things become pressurized. So all of these are under pressure and I have to uh, release the pressure. Sometimes it can be a little scary. Oh. oh, now that that's done, I need to sanitize these in here. The processing time for this relish is 10 minutes. Since I'm at high altitude, I have to increase it. Increase processing time by 15 minutes. So I believe I add that to the 10 minutes, which would be 25 minutes. I think that makes sense. That's what I'm going with. try to jam pack these in here because it's so freaking small around i do not want them to fall over looks like i can fit only six in here put that on turn it up and when it starts boiling i will set my timer for 25 minutes so i filled up five more half pints i'm also going to put this one in just to even everything out Hello, that's a good sign. I ended up with 11 half pints. I would say that's pretty damn good. I'm so excited to pop one of these jars open. I truly cannot wait. This concludes my Sunday night and the vlog. See you in the next one.